Well, Sasha Knezev, author and filmmaker, joins me from Los Angeles uh, to discuss this. Uh, uh, Sasha, the U.S. went into Afghanistan because of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Now, uh, Afghan President Hamid Karzai is saying the U.S. is no longer fighting the Taliban. I mean, doesn't this question the whole reason for invading and occupying Afghanistan? Well, I think we have to look at this in the context of the history of the Taliban. We obviously know that the Taliban was created by uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski. This was all illustrated in his book, The Grand Chessboard. Uh, but I think we also need to look in the, the history of Karzai. Uh, remember, Karzai initially uh, did support the Taliban in the 90s, although he did believe they were used by the ISI, which was the uh, Pakistani intelligence. But he did initially. Uh, and then, of course, he was... Uh, he changed his mind after uh, siding with uh, the U.K. and the United States, uh, and then they used Karzai for other, uh, you know, uh, in U.S. interests that was just to enhance the fracturing and the fragmentation of the area. I think that this was all, you know, the entire purpose of, uh, you know, uh, Karzai's administration, which, um, is, uh, which also is, uh, I think, illustrated perfectly by Army General Martin Dempsey, who just as recently as a couple weeks ago I said that, stated that the United States was going to stay in Afghanistan until at least the end of 2014. Now, this will coincide with the beginning of the next election cycle in the United States. But this continued rupturing of the area and fragmentation uh, between the Taliban and uh, the Karzai administration is what the United States does and its Western allies. I mean, we have to remember when the United States military goes into uh, foreign uh, occupying land, they don't leave. Uh, we still have troops in Kosovo. We still have troops in Japan. Uh, we have we see no ending to the troops in uh, in obviously Iraq and so on and so forth and so forth. Uh, I think we should also look into the fact that in October of this year, it will mark the 12 years um, 12 years of, of this war in Afghanistan. Now the war in Vietnam lasted approximately 15, 16 years. So we're almost at that point, but the difference is that, you know, is that the United States as an industrial capacity was much more stronger in the 50s and 60s and early 70s during Vietnam. We cannot afford this economically. It's time to bring our troops home, and um, I think this is just going to spell a catastrophe for the United States in terms of uh, foreign policy and most, most specifically the economy. And very briefly, uh, I mean, what now? What should we expect to see in the ties between the U.S. and Afghanistan as well as the Taliban? Well, again, I go back to uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski's book, The Grand Chessboard, where this was all uh, you know, illustrated perfectly. I think the entire um, preoccupation of that area is to surround the area of uh, Eurasia, which was to put a stranglehold ultimately on Russia and on China. Um, this preceded the PNAC report, the Project for the New American Century, which was drafted prior to 9-11 and prior to the uh, U.S troops um, going into Afghanistan and into Iraq. So this, this strategy, this grand strategy of um, foreign policy, uh, neo-American imperialism, again, was drafted uh, a long time ago. This was, again, perfectly illustrated in Spig right. Newton's book, who created openly and admittedly the Taliban. So um, I think ultimately the goal is to you know, uh, stay in Afghanistan, perpetuate this war in the Middle East, and you know, go on to the ultimate... Uh, uh, the ultimate Indeed. goal of uh, surrounding the Eurasia uh, area of uh, Russia and China. All right. So I'll have to leave it there. Many thanks, sir, to Sasha Kinezev, author and filmmaker from Los Angeles. Thanks for your time there, sir.